Deere and Company, or John Deere, which is the name, of course, of their brand, is the next company we're going to talk about. It's a big player in equipment for agriculture, turf maintenance, that means cutting grass, construction and forestry. So the quintessential green machine with the yellow trim, the little deer jumping is the main logo. And John Deere, of course, has been around since like 1836 when it was established in Illinois. That's where its headquarters are. Market capitalization, $24.6 billion. Price to earnings ratio, 14.4. Dividend yield of 3.1%. So, I mean, this is the kind of agricultural equipment, the tractors that every farmer Those wants to own. Big combine harvesters. Harvesters as well, good point. As well as uh, just you know, all the services, all the, the parts and servicing of those and the maintenance. Financial and services related to if financing, you, getting to them, buying, buying stuff. them. Yeah. So, very interesting business. I think, you know, Warren Buffett once said, why, own, you know, why run the, the commodities up and down the railroad if you can own the railroad. And this, mm. I think, is owning mm. the railroad. And interesting you mentioned, Buffett, they own like 7 point something percent of John Deere, okay. Berkshire Hathaway okay. does, which is, you know. A couple of problems as well. I mean, the margins declined year on year from about 6.8 percent to 4.6. Mm. So that wasn't so good. Return on equity down from 24 and a half, which is fantastic, mm. uh, down to 15.3, which isn't bad, but no longer great. So. Mm. Uh, I think it's just a byproduct of an industry that's been under pressure. Mm. We've spoken about uh, similar to Caterpillar, prices. similar to all these businesses you know, where well there's been a slowdown in capital spending. Correct, but mm. fundamentally, still a very good business. And mm. earnings coming out next month, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, expectation is 71 cents per share. Mm -hmm. uh, last time, last reported earnings was 80 cents. Uh, sorry, 80 unlike cents Monsanto, the expectations are relatively muted, as displayed with a 14.4. Price to yeah. Let's have a look at the chart because it doesn't really look very exciting over a five year period. Prior to that, it had done well, but it's kind of drifting around. And I guess it's because even though the overall outlook and the sales have been reasonably strong, there have been margin issues, as Petrie is alluding to. And then most recently, this concern that softer agricultural prices might lead to a deferred cycle of equipment replacement by the farmers and the construction companies. Less capex and so on. Yeah. Anything else to note here? Um, not really too much else, I don't think. Um, I see from my notes here that one third of sales only outside of the US and Canada. So this is a business that's based in the kind of agricultural heartland of the Midwest and the United States and Canada. That's their core clientele. They've not really yet begun to exploit the full potential of the global agricultural market. So perhaps. there's room for expansion, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know farmers here, we've got one client who's a very keen and eager farmer in addition to being a share investor. and he he absolutely adores his John Deere equipment mm -hmm. and he says that you can get financing deals in this country at like prime minus one in Jeez. order to purchase uh, John Deere equipment and they are okay. by far the sort of the quality player product. exactly yeah. they are not there are other brands that you can buy but it's the one that he loves the most okay so very I mean well. again the issue really is hot or not it's all very well to get and excited and lyrical about <laughs> what the harvesters look like um, but would you buy the stock i would buy the stock purely because this is what makes the farming industry works mm. you, know? you would i would you would interestingly so you reckon that this is the moment with the results coming up the expectations relatively well muted. i think that you know these particular results don't really matter too much i think mm. um you know, more than likely they'll disappoint uh, and that could be an opportunity. But to hang on, what's going to be required to get this thing moving is an uptick in global uh, the food global economy, commodity prices. Correct. So where's that going to come from? Are you expecting, for example, sugar, corn, maize, all these other things ship to start prices lifting to up? Start lifting? Not perhaps in the immediate future. Mm. Um, I think, though, that generally the market is proving relatively resilient. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're seeing stimulus coming out of Europe, whether or not that's going to be real. And I guess the other point worth noting is if I Iron ore or oil prices are soft because of oversupply. That's a structural problem which mm. is not going to go away because there's been mega investments in new oil fields or new mines. With farming commodity it's prices, very it's, seasonal. It's, it's seasonal. So, like if there's too much, people don't plant. So, the supply demand balance rectifies almost immediately. But much quicker. So, I think that, mm. you know, just the whole. Interesting precept of buying rather the railroad than mm. trying to ship okay. commodities up and down it. I would rather back a company that's So you're going to go hot product. on this one? I'm going to avoid. Not such a big fan <laughs> of the agricultural commodities. Not hot. 